Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we have a very unusual thing in North Carolina. We have a snow day. Sadly it's a weekend but the kids did get out yesterday too. Anyway um, and so I wanted to make some comfort food and one thing you can find in the grocery store if they carry it when it is a pandemic snow day in North Carolina is duck. There was no chicken in my grocery store at one point this past week, but we did find duck. So we are making, I'm gonna have to look at this, duck date and rutabaga pot pie with a duck fat biscuit crust. So we were able to find the ingredients that we needed for this at the grocery store, thankfully. I, I, uh, I can't find duck legs, duck leg quarters, which this is what this recipe calls for um, at my regular grocery store, but it's been very, very helpful for me that we have a Wegmans in, uh, in my city now, and it's very convenient for me. And I was able to find both the duck and the duck fat there. So I'm very happy about that. So I can make this for you. My kids love pot pie, so I'm hoping they like this one. First thing we're gonna do is brown our duck legs. I've got my Dutch oven over medium low heat because we're gonna do this for quite a bit of time. This is probably gonna take me like 30 minutes to brown all of these. Um, yeah, because uh, we wanna do it low and slow but get them pretty brown because we want to render as much fat as possible. Um, so. I've already salted and peppered them on both sides, and we're going to put these in here. I'm gonna, only gonna be able to do like two at a time, so I'm gonna do like sort of larger one and the small one. And I've got a little bit of neutral vegetable oil in there as well. So we're gonna let that go for like seven to 10 minutes, she says, but we're looking for a good brown crust on the skin side first. So I'll be back in seven to 10 minutes and show you what it looks like when that's all done. So my duck legs have been browning for pretty sure more than 10 minutes. They're not as brown as I would like them. I did turn it up a little bit um, when I was getting impatient as I do. It's a little brown, the skin is starting to shrink. I'm gonna call that good for these ones and turn them over. We're gonna brown them the same way on this other side. And then I'm gonna do the rest. Now, my, the number of duck leg quarters that I have is slightly more than what she calls for. Honestly, uh, the weight is about the, is at the upper end of the scale of what she says they should weigh. Anyway, I didn't want to have to figure out what to do with one extra little duck leg. So I'm just using them all here. It's, it's going to be probably a little more than she calls for, but it'll be fine. Anyway, we're going to continue browning and we'll be back when these are all done browning. Uh, when I'm done, I'm just going to put them back on this plate because they're not fully cooked. It doesn't matter. Um, they're going to go back in. So I'm not going to worry about sort of putting the raw stuff back on the outside because they are going to cook way more after I take them back off the plate. So we'll see you when all of this is done browning. So it took at least 30 minutes to brown both batches of my duck legs. If you're only using three and the bottom of your pan was a little bit bigger, you might get away with one, one batch, but didn't want to crowd them, obviously. So um, now I have to pour out all but about a tablespoon of the accumulated duck fat in here. Uh, that's warm. So I've got a heat proof little ramekin that I'm gonna pour this into. So now we're gonna add a bunch of our vegetables, but not quite all of them. So I have diced onion, quite a bit of onion, um, carrot and celery. And then I have uh, some garlic cloves that I've just smashed. So these all go in here. 
And we're going to season these two. salt and pepper on those and we're going to turn the heat up to medium not medium high just medium and we're going to cook these and we want them to get a little bit brown she says about 15 minutes but if they're not browning she says you can turn the heat up so we'll see impatient me if i end up doing that or not so about 15 minutes we'll just kind of keep tossing these around a little bit and uh occasionally and hoping that they brown like they're supposed to. My uh, vegetable's been cooking about 15 minutes. I did turn it up a little bit because it took it a while to get going. But they've got a little bit of brownness on them. And I think we're ready for the next step, which is to add some red wine. Um, she doesn't ask for a particular variety. I've just got um, some relatively inexpensive but not cooking wine drinking wine um, right there and we're going to bring it up to a boil so we're going to bring this up to a boil I'm going to turn it back up I just didn't want it to get too burnt while I was waiting to film again so I'm going to turn this back up so we're bringing it to a boil and then we're going to cook that for two to three minutes probably get some of the alcohol flavor out that's you know, pretty common when you add uh, wine to a dish. So we're just waiting for a boil. Okay, I'm gonna call this a boil two or three minutes from now. We'll continue. So it's been boiling for about three minutes and now we're gonna add some chicken stock. Honestly, I found some in my freezer. This is not quite enough, but I'll add some water if I need to at the next step. So we're adding this chicken stock. I don't remember where it's from, when I made it, but that's why I stocked my freezer with it when I have leftovers. So there's chicken stock, and we're going to add, um, oh gosh, our rutabagas. This is quite a bit of rutabagas, and they are in one inch cubes, approximately. They're not all quite the same because, you know, round vegetables. Um, and now we add uh some herbs so we have some rosemary here we have some thyme here we'll pull those out later um and this is an interesting ingredient it's in the the title so you know should be expecting it but these are dates they are dried dates i buy them pre-pitted but they don't always come pre-pitted um but she says never buy them pre-chopped um but I have cut them into eighths as the re recipe required. They're very sticky, um, very sweet. So we're adding a little sweetness there. Then we have um, a couple bay leaves, that's very common. And then we have some star anise, see there? They smell very licorice-y, I've been smelling those since I took them out. And I have a little bit of fresh nutmeg. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna measure this because I never do, but it's not much, so. That should be good. We're gonna stir this up just to sort of get those herbs down into the water or stock and, um, wine mixture just to make up for the chicken stock that was a little bit light on all right so there's this all of the stuff except for the duck and i'm going to just sort of set the duck on top they are not supposed to be submerged They're supposed to only be about a quarter of the way up so, um, that seems right to me, I guess. And try to fit that one in 
to the center there. There we go. And any accumulated juices goes in there as well. So we're going to bring this up to a simmer at this point. That looks about right to me, so that's good. I don't need any more liquid. Looks like it'll be coming up to a simmer pretty quickly because my chicken stock was pretty warm and everything was boiling, so that's good. I added, I added a little bit of water to make up for the chicken stock. Um, if you don't have enough liquid in here, if it won't, you know, sort of, if they won't sit in the liquid a little bit, you can add some water here if you need to, but they should not be completely submerged. This is boiling as well as I think we can expect right now. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium low. We want it to be at a brisk simmer and we're gonna cover it. So we're gonna cook this at a brisk simmer for one hour. So we'll be back in about an hour to continue. Okay, so this boiled, well, brisk simmered, went a little above that, I think, with the lid on for an hour. And then I took the lid off and cooked it for another 10 minutes. And then the whole thing came off of the heat and we let it sit for another 20 minutes. So now it's not super hot, but it's still pretty warm. But we're gonna take our duck pieces out of the uh, stock mixture stuff that we made. And I'm trying not to, there we go. Um, Try not to get the pieces of herbs and stuff. Uh, so these look very well cooked. We're gonna let these cool and then we're gonna pull them off of the bone and, and get rid of all of the, the bits of things that we don't want to eat um, with our pot pie um, when it's cool, but we're gonna do some other stuff first. So that will cool back there. And now uh, I have my usual sort of straining set up here. And I'm going to, as I usually do, sort of put them really close together. And anything that I don't wanna keep is gonna go in this bowl to discard. We're gonna discard all of our herbs. Keep that there, because that is not all of them. And then I have a, a bowl here to put the vegetables. We're gonna keep these vegetables and they are gonna go into the pot pie. So, and we're gonna reserve the liquid also for the pot pie. So, there we go, I'm gonna grab that. So this is not quite full, but you can see there's still a lot of fat left from the duck on top of here. I'm gonna use my um, strainer here. You can put the, I'm, I don't really care about this part, I've already strained out most of the solids, but you put the liquid in here and the fat rises to the top and then you can pour out the um, stock from underneath. Take the stopper out when you're gonna pour, of course. Uh, and that lets you keep the fat in here um, and makes it easier. You don't have to like defat the broth by putting it in the refrigerator. We can go ahead and get our dinner done with. So. This is a lot of vegetables here. Even after it's all cooked down and Supposed to all fit in a 10 inch skillet, cast iron skillet, which is what that is, um, with all of the gravy. I'm gonna try it, we'll see. I can always leave out some of the vegetables if I have to, um, but there we go. I'm going to go ahead, oh, I've got stuff on me, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all the stuff I don't need anymore. This has had long enough to sort of have most of the fat rise to the top. So I'm gonna measure out the amount of 
broth, braising liquid. Uh, okay, so I'm, go, I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out into here. We don't need all of it, I don't think. Maybe more than I thought. There you go. And you see how we kept most of that in there. So there we go with that. We have a braising liquid, we have our vegetables, and now clean that off a little bit. So while this continues to cool for a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and First, I'm going to heat up my oven, 375 degrees. That's going to be going, be ready for us whenever we're ready. Some butter in our cast iron skillet. Medium heat until it's foaming. And I'm going to need a whisk. Okay, so I've got my butter melted, it's foaming. Now we're going to call that done and I'm going to add a little bit of flour. Equal amounts of flour and butter here. Basically making a gravy. I'm going to let the flour cook for a couple minutes just to get that um, raw flour taste out. It's been a couple minutes and now we whisk in the reserved braising liquid and bring it to a boil. We're going to bring this to a boil and it's going to thicken like gravy. So I am going to keep dealing with my duck meat here. It's kind of up to a boil. I'm going to turn it down a little bit and just let it simmer until it is thickened up like I like while I deal with the duck. This is still seems a little thin to me, but it does coat the back of a spoon. I like my gravy a little bit thick, but this is also sort of the last chance to get to season this. She doesn't say to add any more salt here, but it's a good idea to taste it. It's pretty good. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave that. A little more salt wouldn't wouldn't be a bad thing, but I don't want to over salt it. So we're going to leave that. I think this is probably as thick as it's supposed to be, even though I'm kind of concerned that it's too thin. It definitely does coat the back of the spoon. So we're going to go with it. Now I'm going to put in all of the duck first, quite a bit of meat, because I really don't think I'm going to be able to fit all of these vegetables in. Uh, I'm also going to turn this down a bit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of dump vegetables in and see where we get to and try not to put much liquid because I don't really want it to get any thinner. But I suspect we do want this to be sort of full, full, full because we're going to put a biscuit top on, on it. Um, so, and we are going to cook it on a baking sheet. She already, she says to do that. So, but I would have done it anyway. That's it. I'm going to just keep this warm here and tr try not to overflow my pan because we want this to be warm when we put the top on it otherwise it won't um, be warm all the way through when we when we take it out of the oven because it'll take it longer to warm all the way through so you don't want to put this in the refrigerator and then put the top on and put it directly in the oven because then the top will cook and anyway we're just gonna keep it warm here on the stove while we go and make the um, the topping the duck fat biscuit crust so we'll see you back over there. So our pot pie is basically finished. I've got it on the stove, keeping warm and we're ready to make the crust. Should have made this 
while we were doing it, before we did all that other stuff, but I missed the crucial, this must chill for 30 minutes step, but okay, it'll be fine. So in here, I've measured just some all-purpose flour and I'm gonna add, this has some kosher salt and baking powder in it. So um, she says to sift it, I'm gonna whisk it together. And so now we need to make a wide well here. There we go. And we're going to put in our duck fat first. So I've measured it out like this because I was already using this anyway. Um, normally I'd use something else, but if you can't find duck fat, I'm sure it would be fine with butter or lard or whatever you have available, whatever sort of um, solid fat you can find. There we go. So first you put in your duck fat and then you put in buttermilk. And this is gonna happen a lot like um, the Eastern North Carolina biscuits, which we've made and I did not do a very good job with that. But so since my hand's about to go in this anyway, I'm just gonna use my hand to get, make sure we get all that buttermilk out. And so now we're gonna kind of try to mix the buttermilk with our fat without getting much flour incorporated. And it's very cold because they both came directly from the refrigerator and my hand is gonna be frozen when we're done here, but that's okay. Once you have that pretty much together so it all looks about the same, she says to start moving it back and forth and to and fro, just to start uh, working in a little bit of flour and then turn it over and do the same. But we're just trying to um, work in just enough flour. She says we'll have some left when we're done in the bowl. I think we're almost there and I'm just trying to get all of the little pieces gathered together. I'm gonna call that good. Now we have to chill this for 30 minutes. So my biscuit dough has been in the refrigerator for 30 minutes and I've got a parchment, uh, she says square, it's a rectangle, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna use the flour that's left in the bowl because why wouldn't I to put on here and then I'm gonna put the biscuit dough, which there's a few sort of pieces left in there, but that's all right. Um, biscuit dough down, and we're gonna roll it out roughly round. She says, I think she says to shape it, form it into a ball and roll it out to a quarter of an inch thick. So, that's the plan. So I'm just gonna try to get it roughly circular and a quarter of an inch. This is gonna be the bottom. It's gonna go on top, so against the um, filling, so I'm not too worried about it being looking kind of bad. That'll have to do. And now, I'm get some of that stuff off. Whatever. Now I need the pot pie. Had this keeping warm on the stove so it's not um, cold. And now the goal is to turn this over on top. That's great. That's working. I think maybe I didn't roll it out quite large enough. And it's not going to be pretty, but 
Good part is I did not slosh it all over my counters. I'll take that as a win. Now I need a knife just to make a little hole in the middle. She says about an inch. It's probably a little bit bigger than that. I'm just going to reuse this paper because the last time I baked a pot pie in uh, the oven on a sheet, it overflowed and my baking sheet got full of nasty stuff. So, um, this is actually not that hot. So I'm going to put this on warm on the baking sheet and this goes in the middle rack of our oven that we've preheated to 375 for 30 minutes until it's nicely oh i forgot one little step we're supposed to put a little bit more salt on top i don't know what it's supposed to stick to but whatever there we go we have our pot pie and we're gonna bake it for about 30 minutes or until it's nicely golden brown on top. And we'll show you what it looks like when that part's all done. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watch me make duck, date, and rutabaga pot pie with a duck fat biscuit crust from Vivian Howard's Deep Run Roots cookbook. Um, I have to say I did prefer this pot pie to the other pot pie we made from um, the Pools Diner Cookbook, and I'll link that up above. That was, okay, this was a lot of work. That was even more work. So um, with this one, you have to sort of cook the duck and make the stock, and then you add the vegetables and it's, it's a bit of work and then you make the crust um, separately and I do kind of wish that the crust, like it, it told you to go ahead and make the crust while you're cooking the, the filling because the filling had to cook for quite a while um, and you could have had that waiting, but you probably don't want to make it too far ahead because the biscuit dough might, I don't know, you want to cook those either relatively quickly or refrigerate or freeze and then cook it from that state. Anyway, I think the baking powder starts to, to, to react. And so it starts, anyway. I digress. <laughs> I do wish he had said that we could make that earlier because I thought I was just about done and then I was like, oh wait, now I have to make the crust. And I had been waiting for a while from the other thing, just thinking that it wasn't gonna take that long. But so there is a step where you chill the dough for 30 minutes before you put it on the assembled pot pie. And that was what I neglected to see um, that we could go ahead and get that done, put it in the refrigerator and then probably chill it for more than 30 minutes. We could have had that waiting, we didn't. So it took us a really long time um, longer than we wanted it to, to have this finished. But it was very tasty. We all enjoyed it pretty much. My kids did not love the rutabagas in it, but they did eat them. Um, and I think it was a really great way to use up the rutabagas that we had in our produce box that had just kind of been sitting there for a while. Cause I know it's not something they really enjoy to cook sort of by itself. So putting it in a pot pie made it a little bit better. Um, so can't say this was a super easy recipe, but it is easier than the Pools Diner one. Um, and we enjoyed the duck. We were able to um, reheat the leftovers relatively well and it was still delicious. So that's a good point. And um, I think that's about it. It was good. There's a lot of ingredients, but it's not, there's no really hard techniques in this at least. So if you enjoyed watching me make this, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and come back and watch me make something else next week.